Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to talk about ammunition, what they do and when to use them. Now this is a basic guide to all the various different types of ammunition that we get in the game. Now they fall into two main categories, kinetic energy and chemical energy rounds. Now your kinetic energy is basically your armor piercing. That's the, there are four types, I've only told you three, and the reason for being for that is because the APCR comes as both a standard and a premium ammunition. The most common is the top one, armor piercing, donated with the red sash and a gold tip. After that you've got APCR or armor piercing composite rigid, comes in two types, standard and premium. And then you've got premium armor piercing donated with the red sash and a silver tip. Now, not many tanks have the premium AP, so you won't come across it that often, but it is out there. So they all form your kinetic energy rounds. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have your chemical rounds. These are high explosive. Everybody should know HE. It's the one that causes the most heartache in the game and the one that's probably the most misunderstood on how and when to use it. You then have heat, which is high explosive anti-tank. It's sort of a mixture between HE and AP. We then have high explosive HE premium, very rare. Uh, the T-49 has it, only a few tanks have it, not many. And then we have HESH, primarily used by the British tanks, a couple of German tanks have it, which is high explosive squash head. Very similar to HE, but has greater penetration and it's a sort of mix between HE and heat. But what is all this kinetic and chemical energy malarkey? Well, the kinetic energy round, which is donated at the very bottom here, basically pierces through the armor. As you can see there, it, it, it just goes straight through. The next one is HESH, which is similar to HE. It's, and, and as you can see there, it sort of squashes against the armor and then throws debris around inside. Then the top one is HEAT, and that sort of hits the armor and then penetrates it slightly to fire inside of the tank. Very dangerous, in fact. And this is why they, they differ in all respects. But the main thing is kinetic energy is using the momentum, whereas chemical energy is using that high explosive to cause the damage. So let's have a look at the first kinetic energy route. And we've got the basic armor piercing, the most numerous and the second cheapest shell in the game. Now the way armor piercing works, if you see at the top, it sort of penetrates the armor by force of the impact and then the shell explodes inside the tank. Compare that to the bottom, this is your APCR where again it sort of hits the tank, the outer skin squashes and then there's the core which flies inside the tank and then flies around and generally exits the tank on the other side because it flies at such high velocity. Now, a lot of people think that the your standard AP round is rubbish, when actually it's not. This is me in a Death Star, there's an E100, a standard AP, straight into the lower glacis plate, knock him for six. The standard rounds are okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with using your standard ammunition. The biggest difference between your standard AP and your premium APCR is the penetration values, guys the damage will be greater on your standard ammo. And as you can see, you shouldn't have any problems penetrating certain tanks with your normal AP. And in the vast majority of the tanks, it is your standard go-to ammunition. This is me in an AMX 12T, and as you can see, I'm gonna have no problems penning this KV-2. In fact, I'm just gonna circle him to death and plow standard AP ammunition into the side of him. It's not a big deal. And a lot of people do get frustrated and flustered over this, thinking that they've got to use APCR. You don't have to. Get used to knowing when to switch that ammo, which brings me to APCR. Now, APCR is armor piercing composite rigid. And it's basically like a dart. This thing will just slice through the tank. On some tanks like the E50M here, it's a standard ammunition. And you know, on other tanks, it's a premium ammunition. The mechanics of the shell, however, work the same way. The difference between the two, between the standard and the premium, is just the penetration values. You know, the, the premium rounds will give you greater pen. Now, the thing that you need to know is that it used to be that the premium ammunition also gave out better damage. 
but Blitz has changed that now. Wargaming went back, they kept the, the, the penetration as is and lowered the damage. So you will do more damage on your standard AP and standard APCR than you will on your premium APCR rounds, funnily enough. But the thing is, I mean, there's loads of people saying, oh, you're a gold spammer, or you're a gold noob, or you're a pramo spammer. It doesn't matter. If you need that extra penetration, use your APCR, guys, because it's there for a reason. <laughs> the thing is, I don't care what you use as long as you get the job done, and you shouldn't care what ammunition you use as long as you get the job done. And if people want to get all elitist and say you can only use standard ammunition, then they're just daft in my opinion. You use the tools that are available to you. And if you want and you need and you require that extra bit of penetration, load your APCR and get it. Because I don't see any wrong in that. Now, the, a couple of other things I want to talk about is dispersion and velocity. Now, the general rule of thumb is this. The smaller and stubbier the gun is, like on a KV-2 derp gun, the lower the velocity. The lower the velocity, the greater the dispersion. Now, dispersion is how the shell performs over distance. The more velocity you have, then the shell is going to run more true and more straight over a greater distance than a short stubby barrel. Now the reason for that is as follows. The longer the barrel, the more the gases build up to force the projectile down the barrel and out the end. When you've got a small stubby nose barrel, you don't get those gases guys. So the velocity drops. Now, this is quite an important point because you'll see people in a, say for example, a KV-2 sat on top of a hill on, let's say, canal, trying to shoot from the D-cap to the A-cap. Good luck, because the velocity is so low, the shell could go anywhere, and it will go anywhere. With regard to when do you switch from AP to APCR, well, I'm in a CDC here, I'm finding it terribly difficult to, um, to, to pen that louver with standard AP, switch it to APCR, don't have a problem. As I said, use the tools available to you and don't worry what anybody says. If people are going to shout at you for being a gold, um, a gold ammo pram spammer, whatever it is, what do you care as long as you get the job done? As long as we win the game and as long as you stay alive and as long as you kill tanks, I couldn't give a toss what ammo you use. Next, we're going to look at premium AP, which is donated with that sort of red sash and a silver tip. Not many tanks have this, the SU-100Y does, the Chi Re does, the Kenny Otsu does, to name a few. Now here I am in a Chi Re, and uh, as you can see I've got my standard AP, doesn't pen the Black Prince. Load the premium AP, don't have a problem penning him, finally get rid of him. All it does is pen more, it does less damage. Next is the biggie, high explosive, hey Chi. This is the cheapest shell in the game and the one that everybody struggles with in understanding it. Why? Well, it doesn't actually penetrate as such. What happens is the shell, which is a shape charge, heads towards the target, it hits the armor, and then it heats the, heart, the armor around it, and it fragments inside. Similar to a squash head, but not quite. Whereas a squash head squishes against the side of the armor and throws out, this explodes. Now, what it is good at is very thin armoured vehicles. There was a bat chat, I've just knocked him for over a thousand damage. I'm in a Yeager yes, but that's not the point. Here is a Star Chaser, I'm in a KV-2, I've just knocked him for his full hit points. Because I managed to hit his thinnest part of his armour at the front there, where are you going to do the maximum damage with your HE? But what happens when you come against a tank that's got thicker armour? Well, you'll do this. It's called splash damage. Now, splash damage is where the shell doesn't actually penetrate. It just causes an explosion on the armour outside, which causes minor damage. There is a use for that, which we'll come to in a moment, but try to avoid trying to hit these heavily armoured targets when they're on full health, because you're not going to really do much. What you are going to do, though, when you find a flat panzer side on with that really thin armour, is smack him into next week. That is how you use HE. Now, I said there are times when you can use splash damage. Here is one of those times. He's on a third of his health. Load HE. You're going to take him out even if you don't pen, because 
the splash damage will be enough to do that. Now a couple of things you need to remember of HE. Firstly, it's no good against based armor because it doesn't pen in the same way as AP, nor is it any good if there's any environments in front of you like buildings or trees. It is effective, however, against soft targets like this. Boom. And you can get a really nice roll in your HE. But I do have to emphasize, you need to get familiar with when you can use your HE, because it's not as straightforward as you think. Next, we're going to look at the premium HE. It's similar to a lot of respects to normal HE, but the penetration is greater. There's me and T49 knocking a T44 for next to nothing. Here's an AMX 5100, aim just above the tracks, and you knock him for a high roll as well. Now, this is when it becomes traumatic. I mean, if I was going to, if somebody hadn't shot him, this would have been an ineffective shot. Thankfully, someone did shoot him. I get the splash damage, I get the kill. But that's not an ideal way to use premium HE. Which brings me on to heat, or high explosive anti-tank. Now, this is very similar. It's like a mix between HE and AP. Main difference being where HE doesn't strictly penetrate, heat does it has like a projectile inside of it so here i am um, i've got ap loaded i can't pin anyone on is7 he turns i load heat i get the desired effect same here with the e50m i'm using adcr against this is4 um, um, i'm going to run out of apcr but it's going to show the same effect so you can see that i'm knocking in for 300 with the apcr now i'm loading heat and boom IS-4 notoriously difficult to pen with your APCR, not so with heat in the right places. However, heat is very much like HE, as I said, and there are times when you should, like, that's the time when I shouldn't have used it, because I didn't do anything, didn't pen. And now, watch, this is where the soft target comes into play, and it hits the rail. Two shots that were totally ineffective when using heat. So APCR does the trick in that scenario. That was just very bad use of heat. And I would suggest that you be mindful of those situations. Here's another situation. First, I'm going to take out the waffle tractor with HE. Pretty straightforward. No reason to use heat when you've got a waffle tractor in front of you and you've got HE loaded. Use your HE. Get rid of the low, thin-skinned uh, tank first. Now we've got the IS-7, so I'm going to load AP. As you can see, there I can't pen anything, realistically. Everything is big in red. So, I stupidly take a shot, because I tried to get that lower plate, didn't work. Now I'm going to load heat, which is probably a really stupid decision as well, because what is red on AP with this tank is also going to be red with the heat, oddly enough. And as you can see, there's minor pen, and it's the same effect as the AP. That was a total waste of money and incorrect use of heat. Now I'm going to load back onto AP, and watch, I get the desired effect with the AP. Oddly enough, he's got his turret turned. I'm now going to pen 440. So be mindful of your heat and your AP. Last, but by no means least, is Hesh high explosive squash head which is a british ammunition and it's found on most of the british tanks primarily when you get to the higher tiers here it is on the centurion 71 now hesh is very similar to he with a crucial difference he hits the tank and then effectively mounts its way into the tank and penetrates hesh doesn't actually go inside the tank it squashes against the armor. Because it squashes, it creates a greater surface area than normal HE and throws bits around the tank. So it does work very similar to normal HE. So with that in mind, it's not that effective against spaced armor. Soft environmental cover like trees and bushes and fences and collapsible buildings will stop the projectile dead in its tracks before it even reaches the tank and you 
know, against thick armor, it doesn't normally go in. And as you see there with the uh, E3, I just do a bit of splash damage of 47, which is next to nothing. Whereas the VK, if he comes around that corner a bit further, I may be able to smack him for a lot more. Because the penetration on this, because of the bigger surface area, causes greater damage, funnily enough. So it is more effective than your standard HE in that respect. Here I am in a Death Star, I know there's another Death Star there, if he comes around the corner, I've got my Hesh loaded, he's a soft target, I am going to smack him into next week, and I do 1152, massive roll into him. That is how you can use Hesh. Like I said, it's very similar to HE, and it does carry the same disadvantages as HE. It's an effective piece of ammunition, but it's also very expensive. So as you can see here, that um, that 152 is going to come side on. I've got the Hesh loaded, big roll, 422 into the side of the SU. Now he's going to present his front. There's a on the cheeks. I can get another 426 into him. Now I'm going to look at the VK. I'm thinking about it, and that is totally ineffective. That's 35 splash damage. That was just daft. APCR would have done the job and as you can see there APCR does do the job so you need to know when to use this ammunition I'm going to come around the corner with my Hesh loaded there's an IS-4, ain't going to pen him, switch to AP and knock him for quite a lot of damage so it's important that you understand when to use what ammunition and in what circumstances and when to switch so let's go recap AP, this is your standard ammunition, your standard armor piercing. This is your go-to ammo. This should be your main ammunition and you should have, this should be the most ammunition you have if your tank has it. You need to check the damage, the penetration and the velocity of the tank and you need to understand when you need to switch to something else. Which in most cases will be this, your armor piercing composite rigid or APCR. You use this if you need that extra Umph, and by umph I mean penetration. And don't get lumbered in this trap that you're a Pramo spammer. It's there for a reason. Bloody use it. If you've got it in your tank and you need to get that penetration, use it. It does less damage, admittedly, but it does more pen. It has greater velocity. But again, understand when you need to switch. Which brings us to your armor piercing premium ammunition. Again, it's better pen than your standard AP. Again, it does less damage, again, it's got better velocity, and it's okay out over distance. Not many tanks have this ammunition loaded, thankfully. It doesn't really bring that much more to the game other than that extra oomph in penetration. It is effectively no different to your normal AP. Brings us on to HE, high explosive. The most misunderstood ammunition in the game. Yes, it's the best against thin armor. You will do massive damage. It is incredibly poor against thick armor. You'll only do splash damage. You won't lose penetration over distance, unlike in your AP. The environment, however, does stop the projectile dead. You hit a tree, a bush, or one of these buildings that collapses, boom, gone. It is not effective against spaced armor. However, it is the cheapest ammo in the game. Learn how and when to use it. Understand turrets of certain tanks the sides of those turrets can be he'd understand the rear of the american tanks the bigger tanks can be he'd get familiar with the armor profiles of the tanks guys bring us on to heat high explosive anti-tank very similar to he but with some attributes that are same as ap it's good against thicker armor but it's not f brilliant Better penetration than HE, still good over distance, but the environment will still stop it and so will spaced armor. However, it isn't the same as AP. It has similar characteristics. You need to understand how heat works. And finally, we have HESH, high explosive squash head. Realistically, it's, you know, it's resigned to the British tanks, although, you know, the RU251 has it. Very, very similar to HE. Not bad against thick armor, but it's not brilliant. It has a higher pen than HE. Again, it's okay over distance. Again, the environment stops the projectile and it's no good against spaced armor. But because it's got that squash head, it has a greater area of damage. So if you hit an area that is good for HE pen, 
you're gonna take a lot of damage out of that tank guys now the thing is it's great knowing all of this but it doesn't make up for how it performs in the game in order for you to get the most out of this ammunition you need to understand the other tanks and the ammo the, the armor profiles of those tanks the AP the kinetic side is pretty straightforward it's basically point and shoot and try to miss the red bits on the tank the chemical side which is all your HE and your heat and your hash is a lot more difficult to understand you need to know what areas of the tanks are vulnerable to those chemical rounds once you know that boy you will do a shed load of damage out there because the chemical rounds will dish out more damage than any of the kinetic rounds simple as that the other important thing to note is this don't be shy in using premium ammunition who cares if you're a pramo spammer who cares if you're a gold noob I don't, because if it gets the tank killed, use it. If you've got the money and you've got it in your turret and you've got it in your turret to be used, use it whenever you wish. Don't let anybody else say anything different. Anyway, other than that, that has been my basic guide to ammunition, what it is and when to use it for World of Tanks Blitz. I've been Fujit. I hope that's been useful. Hopefully it has. Hopefully it's educated a few people. Maybe not those of you who, are, who have been in the game a while, but may, you know, maybe some of the newer players didn't know some of this stuff. By all means, comment and all the other stuff below. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server or even follow me on Facebook or Twitter. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do and it makes me happy. And until the next time, I'll say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because, you know, that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.